Good afternoon. I think it's afternoon. Uh, I'm down here at the John Kill Motel in Bisbee, Arizona, run by the wonderful Sterling and Eva. And I'm walking over here because I did some laundry and it's drying. Some pretty bikes, pretty flowers, pretty bike. Yeah, I'm here for a couple of days, basically editing footage. And this motel is awesome. But over here is my laundry, which better be dry by now. So, even Sterling have been wonderful hosts. This place is awesome. Bisbee's really nice. I had never really spent any time here before. And I'm really enjoying it. And then on the 15th, bright and early, I'm going to start the BDR. I'm going to pack up my laundry, go back to the room, and continue editing. <laughs> I'm almost done with the first video for New Mexico, so there's that at least. And just continue and enjoy my stay in Arizona. So I'll catch you later. Eventually. Welcome to the meetup. Not everybody's here yet, but good group so far. Some nice bikes. There's Jennifer. And all of the Moscow. There's the uh, new BDR, or I guess the uh, Overland Expo build. I love the graphics. I, I didn't go that one. We had, I ended up passing out. There's Dash sleeping. And all the guys ended up going. And the coolest looking Tenere I've ever seen. Good lord. Upshift did some new graphics for Moscow. I love this pattern so much. God, this thing's cool looking. Just hanging out here. It's still early. It's only like one o'clock or something. But uh, should be a fun time. Catch you later. <laughs> Here to go ride. Not gonna record for too long because I'm just setting off for the monument. But just got gas, zero all my stuff out. Let's do the thing. 30 minutes to the start of the monument. I do have earplugs in because it's gonna be 30 minutes of riding. Bisbee is freaking cool, man. I don't think I'd ever really spend any time here. I really like it. Had a great time at the meetup. Got to talk to Ash from Moscow Moto finally. Talked to her a bunch actually yesterday, so that was really cool. And just a really all around good group of people. So, a success. We are back on the BDRs and about 125 miles to Benson, I believe, is the first end of the segment. The official start is the sign for the Coronado National Monument. So they had a grass fire go through on the other side. We'll all show you when I get to it, but. The road is apparently open, so that's the good news at least. One of the guys that I met when I first got to the John Kill Motel, Don, was on a Rally 900 Triumph, and he got all the way up to basically the start of the Muggy on Rim and broke his frame in half on his bike. Not sure how that happened yet, but it was rather catastrophic. He's fine, the bike is not. Pioneer Pass is still closed, unfortunately, between Globe and Young. 
so I'm gonna have to be on pavement for that whole section, which kind of sucks because Pioneer Pass is a ton of fun, but apparently it has washed out quite badly and is basically a dirt bike only route for a while. And it sounds like they had a, a fire of some kind up there, and so all of those roads are closed for right now. The only real technical riding I'm going to get into today will probably be the Los Cienegas area and uh, the Empire Ranch, I think. And it is the 15th. Overland Expo doesn't start till the 20th. I believe I can check in on the 19th to camp, like in the afternoon. So I will probably plan on doing that. But I got plenty of time to get to Flagstaff. So no rush, it's just a question of how soon do I want to try and get out of the heat. <laughs> All right, there's dirt. This is Montezuma Pass. Really pretty, just not, you know, technical or difficult at all. That's a good couple of days off. I got basically a video and a half done. So once I get to Overland, I should be able to finish editing that one real quick and knock out a second one. That'll cover me all the way into July. I don't want my rear facing to just be a sky cam. There's only so much I can do. Sunita, 55 miles. Canelo Pass, which is after the fire area, is 35 miles. And Benson is basically 117. We'll see how many Border Patrol people I see out here. I would imagine I'll be one of the only non-Border Patrol vehicles out here for a while. I would love to run into a group of motorcyclists and be like, hey, mind if you get another? <laughs> La Cienegas is really the only part of it that I'd like to have somebody to ride with, other than, you know, further up north where it starts getting pretty gnarly. It is really pretty out here, though. Not nearly as wet and green as it was last time I came through. I don't think there's going to be too many flowers and everything blooming this time before all the cactuses were in full bloom and it was gorgeous but it's so dry right now oh, there's border patrol at least a car he's not in it so last time i came through here i was with gavin and unfortunately i found out earlier this year that back in april or may of 2021 gavin actually passed away which is just really sad. His wife contacted me and we talked a little bit. But yeah, he he's no longer with us. And thankfully I have, you know, the videos and stuff from the trip. That was really a lot of fun and he was a really good riding partner. Let's see, it's the 15th. I wanna say that I started this route almost exactly two years ago. It was around this time for sure. But yeah, basically two years ago. Five days to get to Flagstaff. I get the feeling I'm probably gonna have a day off just because I don't want to get to Flagstaff super early. But at the same time, I know that I'm gonna be able to cover ground pretty quickly on this route by myself. Yeah, I mean, it's 79, 80 right now. It's gonna probably be 100 degrees today. Oh, yeah, I love all these little scrub oak and trees and all this stuff. It's so pretty back here. It's almost too bad that it's right on the border because the amount of border patrol they have to have around here is ridiculous because I'm sure the trafficking that goes on is extensive. You know, you have relatively easy access to roads. I would have to think they, they get a lot of people trying to come through here, get picked up by, you know, tourists, quote unquote. Here's some of the fire. Here's looks like where the fire ended. And jump the road there. Going straight. Damn, yeah, it really, really got all that. The roads definitely make pretty effective fire breaks a lot of the time. But if the wind's blowing hard enough, you can see what happens. The unfortunate part is after the fire goes through, then the border patrol and everybody has to look for bodies of people if they happen to be trying to cross through here. The sign said a careless match destroys. I don't know what caused this, but you know, they're not wrong. It's like 80% of wildfires are human caused. 
grass fires move so fast, especially when it's windy. There's, you know, there's cases where you could not outrun a moving grass fire. You can see back there, the, the fire front could have been several miles wide. So, even running perpendicular to it, you're running for your life for several miles. We will cross back through the burn area after I turn north from the border. Uh, there's people. Interesting. Why are there people? You guys okay? Uh, I need information. I, I want to go to the Park Lake. To where? Park Lake. Park Canyon Lake. I saw the plate. The plate over there, but I walk and walk and walk. I don't see. It, I, it doesn't say, it doesn't show it on my map. Yes, the plate over there says nine miles. But I walk and walk and walk, I don't see Yeah, well, I mean, nine miles is a long way. Where did you park at? Yeah. Where did, where's your car at? The park, Canyon Lake. No, where's your car? It's a far away, man. I, honestly, I would probably go back to your car. Because it's going to get, because it's only going to get hotter. I mean, there's at least cell phone reception here, but, I mean, I mean, look at my map here, like, that's where we are, is the blue dot. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing out here. Do you need me to call somebody for you? Because, I mean... We don't have any, anything here, you know, to call uh, someone help. That's right. I mean, I have reception. So you don't have Hold on a second. Let me get my helmet off and I can... Oh, God. That's why I follow the plate over there. It's a nine miles. Yeah, but I mean, that's a long way to walk. And you may you show nothing. No, there's there's nothing this way. It's all it's all like ranches and farmland and stuff. So That's I don't know what I, I don't know what park that would be, but let's try this. Because obviously I can't give you a ride. <laughs> well, not. I don't know. Hi, my name is Brady. I am out here, kind of near the border and over in like the Coronado National Monument area. And I just came across two people that are walking and they're probably three or four miles from their car. They were trying to get to Park Lake Reservoir or something like that, or Lake, I don't know. I can't, I can't find it on my map. I'm on a motorcycle, but they're, they're in the middle of nowhere and they don't have any water. They're, they're okay. They're conscious and everything, but they, they, they need help get out of here. Cause <laughs> no, they have nothing. They have bottle of uh, like one liter bottle of waters and that's it. Do you have a do you have a ping from my phone by any chance? I can if that works easier. Okay, I'll do that. Yep. All right. Bye. I need to call her on another number. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna send, but they're gonna work on getting somebody out here to to help you out. Where are you from? We're from Florida, but now you come to visit the mountain. But yeah, I'm I mean I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've I've ridden through here on my motorcycle before. There's nothing out here. No, they're not in distress, but they're out of water, and we're... And they're from Florida, you said? That's what they said, yeah. Yeah, whoever gets out here. All right, thank you. All right, they're going to send somebody over here. She didn't say, but I'm, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I literally saw six Border Patrol cars on my way in here, so there's going to be somebody in the area. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean it's 80 plus degrees. You're not going to make it another three miles. Just, I would wait till they come out and help you out. Do you need some water? I have... Please, man. Yeah. I push. That's, that's why I have all this stuff. Like, you know, if you don't have water and food, you could, you could absolutely die out here. Thank you very much. Good bless you, okay? Yeah. I don't know. I would, I would just say here. Thank you very much. I appreciate so much about water. Yeah. Okay. I just spoke to another dispatcher about two people that are down here by the border at the Corn Auto National. Okay. They, I gave them a little bit of water, and they're now walking uh, eastbound.
on this road. So they, I'm, I'm assuming that they came across the border because they didn't seem interested in hanging out for somebody to show up. They're sitting down by a sign over here that for one of the cattle guards, but they weren't interested in hanging around. And I wasn't obviously going to force them. So, yeah, I will continue on my way. But they're about a hundred yards east of me on the road. I, yeah, they could, should be pretty easy to find. <laughs> They're the only people I've seen out here other than Border Patrol, so... Alright, thank you. Alright, I don't know what's going on with that, but... The dispatcher said, basically, no reason for me to hang around. They've got to be coming from coming over the border. I gave them a little bit of water. They don't seem to want to stick around, so... Hopefully, Border Patrol will get over here and talk to them. There's no way that they drove out here. I would have seen their car. There's nowhere else to park. And that's not the direction that they were walking initially. They were walking this way. So, you got one liter of water each, which is completely gone. You got nothing with you. I mean, it's 85 degrees, dude. You ain't gonna make it another two miles. You will die. At least they were nice. You know, it would suck if they were super aggressive or anything. Hopefully they don't try and like hide in the bushes or anything if Border Patrol comes. But they had no idea where they were. I'm trying to get to Nogales? No, dude. Nogales is 80 miles away. <sighs> oh, hi, Havelina. How you doing? Just saw one of them. Sad. Really, really sad. I'm glad that they'll be okay. But yeah, it's just a really sad situation overall. Here's my turn. Uh, hi, cows. Pardon me. Arizona rocks. <laughs> I was the one who called about those two people and uh but yeah as soon as they heard somebody was coming out they're like okay i'm just gonna go walk down this way and they were walking back the way that they were were coming when i saw him he asked me where nogales was i'm like dude it's 80 miles away like you're not walking in nogales so they had no idea where they were at it was a little bit there's a ranch like maybe a mile from where they were at where i saw them and they were walking back east the last time i saw them they were right in the middle of the road when I saw them. I hope they don't try and hide from you. They don't, they don't got shit. They're not going to make it two more miles. Yeah, I hope you find them. They ain't going to make it much further. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Good, yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, what can you, I mean, what can you do, you know? Yeah, that guy got lucky. He probably had a stressful couple of days when this fire came through. Crap. 
see there I can feel the bike being a little bit hot this is one thing I've been very impressed on this bike is it doesn't really feel hot almost ever my KTM would get so hot both of them the 990 and the 690 you'd just be cooking like god this bike is warm and this thing I've almost never noticed any kind of heat coming off of the bike all right I want to say I pop out onto the pavement here pretty much right here get into Sunita probably won't get gas but I probably will get a snack cool off a little bit Seconds late. 57 miles to Benson. So I got a call from the sheriff's office while I was at the gas station back there having a snack and a drink. And they confirmed that the Border Patrol had gotten those two people. And the way they put it was they apprehended them, but basically they got them out of there because. Yeah, it wouldn't have taken much longer and they would have been in real trouble. I do not regret calling the sheriff's office. Those people needed help. Whatever your opinions are on people crossing the border illegally, whatever, like, the biggest thing is, is they needed out of there. They were going to die if they stayed out there. Welcome back to La Cienegas Conservation Area slash Empire Ranch, I want to say is what it's called. See how many gates I have to open. La Cienegas is really easy to bypass if you decide to because you pop back out onto the hardball just a few miles up the road. So if this is really bad or you just don't feel like messing with it, you just keep going up the highway. I mean, it gets pretty technical, but it's really pretty fun. I just don't know how loose all the rock's gonna be. That's, that's the biggest question. A grass fire there. There's some sand. Some washboarded sand too, that's fun. 95. Yep, here's sand. Gates open. Let's go through there. Yeah, rocky and loose, but relatively straightforward. I'd love to find a shady spot and take a break, but I already know that's <laughs> there ain't gonna be much out here. Yeah, now I'm hot, my feet especially, but it is uh, warm. Oh, that's deep. Damn it. Yeah, my brake pedal is bent, but I'll fix it later. Now I'm really hot. Yeah, we're gonna first gear this. No heroes. Honestly, even that bit right there wasn't that bad. I just got cross rutted like it. It crossed me up and threw me. Rocky.
this is really bad. Yeah, biggest problem I'm dealing with right now is heat. The riding ain't that bad. 100 degrees and working off-road is not easy. First, here's the climb that I remember. Yeah, it's a, about the same shape. here to the right. I'm gonna stop and take a break. Yeah, I think I'm stopping in. Benson, yeah. Oh yeah. That's a little gnarlier than it used to be. Come on. Nope. Damn it. Ah. <sighs> one eternity later. Okay, I'm giving it one try to get to the top. If I drop it. Because I am approaching heat exhaustion. One more fall, and I'm calling for help. It's not, it's really not the terrain. Unfortunately, it's the heat. I am not acclimated and rapidly getting dehydrated. I have water still, so it's not an emergency, but I did take off my armor, so I gotta be really careful. Took it off because I was overheating. All it came down to So I just gotta take it easy and get out of here. good news is I do know that that was basically the end of the really hard part and from here on it's a lot of stuff like this Yeah, there's the main road. I'm really close to being out of here. Like the riding's not easy, don't get me wrong. It's definitely not easy, but it's not horrible. I just am super overheated right now. Oh, that's really rocky. I don't remember it being this bad. At least not this bit. I'm not falling again. Went back up 
right here. Oh god, where am I going? I'm going right. I did kind of fix my brake lever at least. Or pedal. It's in a better spot than what it was. So close. <sighs> yep, here's the other gate. Oh, if you think I'm moving slow, it's because I am. Of course I would have a big rock right under my wheel when I went to do that. Okay, oh, that's open. Like, I need you to understand. I'm in the early stages of heat exhaustion. I'm not at heat stroke yet, because I'm still sweating, I'm still functioning, but I'm not all okay right now. Oh God. I need a second, there we go. <sighs> That was almost a catastrophe. Pretty sure I'm almost out of water. Okay, I'm really close, like a thousand yards or so. And once I hit pavement, I'm gonna drink all the rest of my water and go into Benson and get a room with air conditioning. And sit there and drink water and eat salty foods until I feel normal. Probably the only reason I'm even able to keep going is because I did hydrate really well yesterday and didn't drink any alcohol. If I had started dehydrated, I would have f***ed. But yeah, until I'm in better shape and better acclimated, it's gonna be easy section city for me. I just don't have it right now to, to force some of these routes. I know it's more entertaining for you guys when I'm working hard and everything. There, I'm finally cooling down a little bit. My legs are still hot, but I don't feel like my torso is sweating like crazy right now. Oh, hi, dear. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you run in this heat. I will say this bike is handling a lot better in the sand. The suspension adjustments that I did to it helped a lot. Can't see and it's deep, so I'm just going. Sorry if there's somebody there. And pavement, oh, thank God. Oh, I'm gonna keep drinking this, but I'm gonna let you go, because that's the last dirt until I'm in Benson, which is 30 miles. I will sign off, and I will probably talk to you from the hotel room in Benson. Three hours later. Good afternoon from beautiful Benson. Yeah, I'm not camping in 102 degrees. That was stupid. I'm just downloading footage. That was an eventful day. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some food here in a minute and drink a of water and, and come back and probably edit footage. I will see you probably tomorrow. Uh, I can't get to Flagstaff until the 19th and that will be the plan. So we'll see and I will catch you later.
30. Just gonna throw on my armor and get going. Time to get out of Benson and back on the road. All right, finally back on dirt. 45 miles from Mammoth. And I should start seeing saguaros here pretty shortly. And everything along here is pretty chill. It's basically only until I get through Mammoth where you start going along the railroad tracks. And it's supposed to be in the 90s again. So the goal will be to get to Globe and decide if I want to keep going from there or just stay in Globe for a night. It's, I mean, it is already cooler than yesterday. So it's 8.30 and it's only 75 degrees. Whereas yesterday, at this time, it was nearly 90. Through here, getting a Mammoth is easy. There's nothing technical on this little bit. It's just roads like this. And the only really part of this bit between Mammoth to Winkleman that's going to be difficult is there's one big wash. There's a couple of little ones, but they're not bad. And then there's one good sized one that is pretty deep sand. But we'll see. I mean, I'll probably just take it easy and get through. Alright, here's the first cactus. Saguaros. They grow in such a narrow ecological band, it's hilarious. They're not found anywhere else but this one little stretch. Basically 9 o'clock and it's 10 degrees cooler than yesterday. Super pretty back here. I'm glad everything's so green because everything else is so dry. That looks like a deer. It's in the road up here. Yeah, it's a deer, right? Tail, yeah. Cool. We don't see too many more of those guys. God. I have to clean my sunglasses off after that. That's going to be it until I am in Mammoth. Which is only five miles. So, see you there. 12 seconds later. See what this is like. Other than crossing the washes, it should be pretty chill and a lot of fun. It was a blast last time. 58 miles to Globe and Winkleman is, I want to say only 30 or so, something like that. But yeah, it's going to be a long stretch of pavement once I get to Winkleman because Pioneer Pass is fully closed. You could do it on a little bike or with a lot of help. Not trying to do that today. I think last time I came through here, it was the hottest day we experienced on the trip. So I think we saw 107 or something in Winkleman. I have no idea what condition this road's gonna be in. It could be fantastic or it could be awful. I don't remember it being particularly technically difficult. It was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of flowy two track-ish type stuff once you get back in here. Um, the washes will be sandy, but that's all right. I'll just go slow. Still obviously a pretty well-traveled road. I mean, I'm assuming the ranchers all have to use this to get to and from. It is hot. 95 is what the bike's showing. these trees overhanging the road. Dip, duck, dodge, and dive. Okay, no vehicles beyond this point, great. All right, I guess I'm going up that road back there. I remembered seeing on the BDR group there was a redirect. I just didn't know it was this section. Cuz 
because I don't want to have to go back. Yeah, okay. Okay. Where does this go? I'm not going to go very far up this. Especially if it starts getting gnarly. I just want to see whether it dips out. Nope. Well, I think I'm going back, to be honest. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Not today, not by myself, and not in this heat. I mean, that kind of sucks. I'm not gonna go through where they've prohibited be vehicular traffic. I don't know how else to get through there. So, okay, that's blocked and I don't know what the workaround is. They need to update those GPS files. Back to Mammoth, and I guess back to the road. This is the aspect of being by yourself. With other people, you can take more risks and try to route find and try and figure all this stuff out. And you can't take those risks. So, I'm not going to. From my memory of the workaround, it had you literally just going straight across the wash and resuming the route, but there's a fence there, so I don't understand how that's supposed to work. I'll take a look at it, I'll, I'll pop it up in the video when I'm doing this section, but I know there's a way around that, I just don't know what it is. This stuff is so much fun though. This is 100. That's probably about right, given the amount of reflections I'm getting off of the ground. All right, here's the pavement. I'm gonna kill the cameras. So I will talk to you this afternoon after I get to Globe. A few moments later. So I'm about nine miles from Winkleman and I was going through this little town. And I realized there was a road that comes over here and re-intersects with the route. So I'm gonna try and do that. Well, I'll look at the map afterwards, but I think I only missed about a mile or two of the off-road bit. Oh, this is flooded. Looks good on their left there. I'm gonna do it. Oh, that was deep. <laughs> <laughs> It just connects to the road here. Damn it. Yeah, I only missed maybe a mile or two. Well, I'm cooled off now. <laughs> that was deep. <laughs> that, that cleaned the bike off a bit, I think. That's all the dirt. So, I mean, I missed a mile of it, basically, because of that gate. But I will see you in Globe. Tomorrow. Good evening. Just uh, editing footage. Basically, I have everything packed up for tomorrow, did a little bit of a resupply on food, and I'm ready to go. So I will get up in the morning, finish packing up, and head out. The day after tomorrow, which will be the 19th, will be in Flagstaff and at Overland Expo. There's gonna be a section of the BDR that I miss from diverting over to Flagstaff, but that's also, most of that section is closed anyway because of the table fire, I believe is the name of it. So I couldn't have gone through there anyway. Just finishing editing some footage. It's like 8 p.m. right now. So I'm working on day three of New Mexico. And ate dinner and gonna take a shower and then go to sleep. So good day off. And I will see you in the morning. Leaving Globe. Already had breakfast and everything. It's about 7.30. Yennefer's nice and clean. It is going to be warm today, but I'm also going to be gaining several thousand feet of altitude. 
Alright, we're gonna get down here and get gas. And then I'm probably not gonna run the cameras until I get out there a ways. I'm on pavement for probably the first 15 or 20 miles on my way out of Globe. That is such a cool bridge. It is 65 miles to Young, and we'll see what this route is like. So the main route, which goes up here and follows a forest road called 203, has been relisted by the BDRs as an intermediate to advanced in sections, basically just because of all of the high traffic that's gotten. Since they moved it off of the other road, which was 202, which is what Gavin actually went up last time we tried to do this and you can see from my other videos that thing's a mess and so basically just the additional traffic that it got on it on 203 has resulted in it being a little bit more difficult now than what it was apparently so I guess we'll find out if it gets too stupid I will come back down and take the easy alternate if I need to but I've done this section twice now because I did it in both directions when I had to come back to help Gavin and I've done the easy alternate also I know what it all looks like we'll see how it goes the nice thing is I will be gaining altitude so it will get to stay cooler it shouldn't get much over about 83 ish today and I should be camping up on the rim so that'll be nice This first bit of it, you're just on fire roads like this, so that's really not a big deal at all. And then after you turn on to 203, it gets a little bit more rocky and there's some pretty nice little climbs and stuff in there. I don't really remember any big segments where it was super difficult or anything. And it's really pretty up here. But yeah, back in the area that I know so well. <laughs> So this was the section that Gavin and I got separated on because at the 202-203 intersection, he went straight because his GPS, I still think his GPS was recalculating to the shorter route, but he went straight, I made the turn, and uh, he got into a show, and I did not. And the result was me end up having a, about a 14 hour day. I think I did 220 or so miles of off-road that day, trying to get back to him and see if I could help him out. And that's not the goal for today. <laughs> the goal for today would be to get up to the rim and to one of those campsites. And tomorrow it's down into Flagstaff. I may end up having to do some fairly significant diversions due to forest fires. There's a big fire in Colorado near Pagosa that just started. New Mexico shut down. Um, I'm glad I did New Mexico BDR when I did because you can't do it now. Carson National Forest, Santa Fe National Forest, basically the entire northern portion of the New Mexico BDR is fully shut to vehicular traffic because of fires. And there's also now a fairly large fire near Chloride Canyon, which may end up actually burning Chloride Canyon and, and threatening the town of Chloride. It's going to be a bad fire season, so I may end up getting fully routed around a few things that I don't get to do, which is unfortunate, but that's the nature of the West right now. Like, we're in damn near a 10 year drought. All the trees are dead because of beetle kill, and uh, people keep doing dumb shit. One of the fires in Colorado was started by a community service officer in uh, eastern Colorado who was burning basically slash and debris piles after being told not to. But he had to know better and it burned down at least two people's homes. It didn't kill anybody, thankfully. And once you get up top a little bit, it is absolutely gorgeous. You can tell how much more water there is back here. 
because everything is in bloom. There's actually a couple of small water crossings on this section. Day off yesterday was nice. I was able to get a video completed and uploaded and then got about halfway through day three for New Mexico. So that was good. I am carrying extra water in case I end up dry camping tonight. There's a bunch of campgrounds up on the Muggy on Rim, so my anticipation is to stay in one of those. The next section from Young to Winona, I think is the name of the town, but it was the section when Gavin and I did it where lots and lots of ruts and it's just not in great shape, but it just seems like most of the Arizona BDR right now is not in very good shape. And so I'm gonna bypass that bit and just go straight to Blagstaff for Overland. What are you? That's a Gila monster. Holy sh Hey buddy. Yeah, why don't you get off the road? That is a Gila monster. They are a poisonous lizard. They're not very dangerous because they have to sit there and like chew on you to get their venom in. But that's cool. I've never seen one of those in a while before. I'd always wanted to. <laughs> that was awesome. He's a good sized guy too. That's about typical for them. They don't, I mean, at least in the wild, they're not gonna get much bigger than that. So, I mean, yes, they're poisonous, but you saw it. How they, you'd have to do something pretty stupid to get bit by one, like pick it up. Cool. I've always wanted to see one of those. I was kind of hoping when I was hiking the CDT that I was gonna see one because I would be out on foot more, but yeah. Finally got to see a Gila monster. <laughs> Oh, here's one of the water crossings. Let's see if there's any water on it. God, big old rock hidden in there. Damn it. Should have picked one of the sides. So the trick on these is go fairly slow and stay in the uh, tire marks because the other areas the algae tends to build up and it can get really slippery and just no sudden movements it's like riding on mud oh yeah this is gonna be nasty <clears throat> where I go first god I am just Digging a f***ing trench. That's just full on 12 inches of gravel. Yeah, that whole road must have washed out. Coming down this, I was just, like when I was trying to get back to Gavin, I was bombing down these hills. Like I did the whole section in basically two hours, I think. No, more like three. But that was after already doing it once. It doesn't look like they've done any work on this, but I mean, this is in great shape. This bike also climbs so well. It can go over stuff so much easier than the 690 did because I just always had to keep the 690 revved up. And I didn't like that. I had to go through stuff sometimes way faster than I would have liked. And on this, I can just kind of pick my way through at slow speed and it does great. Don't get me wrong, there's times where you kind of just got to go for it. But, oh God, All right, well, so much for the rear facing camera. Oh, it actually broke. Great, okay. The mount stayed on. I'll fix that later at some point. At Overland, probably. Well, that kind of sucks. That's a fun view to have. So yeah, I'll, I'll mess with that when I'm at Overland. And what broke was not the GoPro mount on the back of my GPS. It was the actual, like, foot. And yeah, I think I put the uh, Hero 8 up there and let it run and see if it works better. Oh, I remember that climb being pretty rocky, but we'll see. I remember this descent being pretty rocky. 
because climbing out of this wasn't a ton of fun coming the other direction. But this is in great shape right now. Oh, it's actually really sandy. Oh, the cows have been in here. That used to be super loose and rocky, like just covered in loose rock. The sand is new, I don't remember that, but I have a short, so no big deal. Yeah, this really looks like it got graded at some point. They don't appear to have thrown down gravel like everyone else does, so that's nice. Oh, relax. We're in the low 80s. We're up to 4,500 feet of altitude from basically 3,000, I think, was one of the lower ones that I saw. And I should be camping tonight at like around 7, I think. So it should be significantly cooler. Generally speaking, when you're going up in altitude, you lose about three degrees for every thousand feet of altitude that you gain. I did strongly consider just taking the easy route up here. I remember how beautiful it is up here, and so I didn't want to do that. But I also don't want to get up here and then find out that this is a whole situation too, you know? Because that wouldn't be any fun. I don't want to do that, you know? There's a lot of this I don't remember. Came through here twice, but the second time it was already getting dark when I came through here. And I was going very fast. So I wasn't exactly enjoying the scenery. And honestly, it looks quite different. They've definitely done a fair amount of work back here on it. Like these water tanks weren't here. It doesn't really look the same. The road is in better shape, which is nice. In some areas, it's in a lot better shape. You know, I spent most of the climb coming up here on the 690 in first gear in just mountain goat mode. And that hasn't really been the case at all so far. should hit a couple of gates here if memory serves this one's open but yeah there was a couple of closed gates up here i know this opens up into some like really fun almost two track road going over the flat bit the exit to this is so much fun because it's just beautiful forests you just gotta get through all the rocky stuff first <laughs> Oh, that air feels really good. Oh, and the saguaros are gone. I will not see any more of those cactus on this trip. They live in a very narrow climate zone right around Tucson and that area. You will not find them anywhere else. Yep, here's the first gate. I just feel like I'm gonna step in between these and fall through. <laughs> Alright, so my memory is of one more kind of difficult climb out and otherwise a hell of a lot of fun riding. But we'll see if that's correct or not. This is in really good shape. It's in better shape than it was the first time I did it.
remember this. A little bit of gravel going straight. I think the high for today in Flagstaff was only like 78 or something. So yeah, here's hoping. This is so much fun. It's just super straightforward, but it's just, you know, kind of a flowy two track road and it's a ton of fun. gate is open and I'm going immediate right because I'm not doing the expert section. Let's go second, that was first, whatever. I may not end up filming a ton tomorrow because I'm basically not going to be on the BDR route to get into Flagstaff. The descent off the Muggy on Rim is apparently just a mess right now. And so I might just take the main road and just have a nice relaxing ride into Flagstaff. Um, that was that bit when Gavin and I did it that there was some very rocky descents and a lot of like big ruts that weren't muddy when we went through, but God, they would have been a mess if they were. So yeah, I'll more than likely just head out from the campsite and just ride to Flagstaff. This got pretty ate up. Damn. Still, if you could just roll through it. Just roll. <laughs> and then it's... So I gotta look at the diversion. Because I, I can't go through Sunset Crater. And the next bit is up to the Grand Canyon. So I'm not sure exactly what I gotta do in order to get onto the Grand Canyon bit. Because this time I am going to go through the Grand Canyon. And I'm going to avoid that steep step section that we found last time. Because according to the BDR organization, it is now even even worse shape. I'll probably be on paved roads basically leaving Grand Canyon. Oh, and then i got to figure out if I'm going to stop somewhere for a couple of days and work on editing footage or how I'm gonna handle getting and in, going into Utah. 18 miles. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have basically the lunch at the Young gas station. This is gonna be kind of a boring video, unfortunately, since I lost my rear facing. But whatever. Honestly, it was pretty chill riding overall anyway. But hey, I got to see a Gila monster, so. That was the uh, highlight of the day for sure. Let's see, do I need, I don't technically need to go into Young because I have enough gas, but I'm probably gonna do it anyway just to, to top off and then also to have lunch. Yeah, that was totally fine. That was in better shape than it was in 2020. So I know the BDRs are calling this an intermediate, intermediate advanced, but it's actually in really good shape. Like, if you're a beginner and you have a good basic set of skills and maybe two people with you, I'd have no problem taking you up that. It would be challenging for a beginner, but imminently doable. All right, here comes the hard ball. I am going left because I'm going into Young to get gas. And then yeah, 15 miles to 260, which is basically where, I guess the sinkhole campground is where I stayed last time. One hour later. All right, welcome back to Young and to the gas station where you need a dirt bike just to get into the parking lot. <laughs> it's not actually that bad, but it definitely feels like that initially when you hop up there and you're just like, oh <laughs> Yeah, the whole road is just washboarded. 
So yeah, the plan right now is to get, find out where I'm gonna camp, drop some of my gear, and head over to the muggy on rim, just check out the rim, fly the drone a little bit. Um, they're grading the road, so I think I'm gonna wanna go on this side. Because if I go on the other side, I run the risk of going head on with the friggin' road grader. I definitely don't want to do that. Alright, I'll cross over as soon as I get a window. God, some of those rocks are big. We're still going up. I knew we were going to gain a lot of altitude. It's under 80 now. Feels pretty nice. Here's the pavement. The Rim Campground. Not the same place that I did last time, but that's alright. A few moments later. Oh, we're gonna go ride out to the rim, shoot some video, and come back. Yeah, I talked about this before, but so the Muggy on Rim is basically just a geologic feature. Most of northern Arizona, northwest New Mexico, Southwest Colorado, some areas like in Utah are all on a basically plateau raised above the surrounding terrain. And this is the edge of it. This is the most well-defined edge of it, but yeah, this is the edge of it. So, you know, most of the morning I was at 5,000 feet max-ish, and now I'm at 7,500. So, you know, you gain 2,000 feet over all of the surrounding terrain. And it's quite nice up here. Oh boy. Gravel. I do remember the washboard on this road being pretty horrendous. Oh God. I can't really go on to the smooth stuff because it's in the opposing lane of traffic. And I know there will be ve oh god, I know there'll be vehicles coming the other way. I'll probably have the drone kind of follow me back from there. And then I'll stop once the battery's going dead. Hell, this is probably what broke Don's frame. <laughs> it was good to get out here and at least ride this section of it since I'm not connecting this through to Flagstaff. Oh my god, it's just continuous from gutter to gutter. Oh god, there is no escape. And here it is. There's the rim. Might actually go up here and flip around.
this road. I, I mean, I would tell Don this is probably what broke his frame. Because he got up past this. It may not have been what messed up the bolts and stuff, because it sounds like his crash bar bolts were sheared off before that somehow. But this, pro this might not have done that, but it very well could have uh, been what did his frame in finally. Here's the pavement, thank God. Yeah, the muggy on rim. And a whole lot of altitude change. <sighs> That's probably the road that I'm going down tomorrow to get out of here. Later. Let's download some footage. I am here at the Rim Campground on Nagyan Rim and I'm just working on getting the footage from the day downloaded. Um, I am going to end up switching from this, which is the GoPro Max, to the GoPro 8 for my rear facing camera because I figured out that it will be smaller and a lighter footprint. Good day overall, pretty short. I mean, it was 130, 140 miles, something like that, but pretty quick and easy overall. And tomorrow it is in the Flagstaff. It'll be basically paved roads the whole way, so I'm not worried about filming too much. Should be a chill day ride into Flagstaff, set up camp. Gotta go hit the post office, because I got something general delivery that should be there. And... Back to editing footage. <laughs> so we'll see what I'm able to get done in the next four days, basically. I will catch you later, So I gotta download footage off of you. for very long because it's gonna be basically two hours on the road but yeah it's 6 30 yeah woke up really early felt good said screw it let's go beautiful morning though 55 degrees it didn't get very cold last night it might have gotten below 50 but not by much. Slept really good. Ended up falling asleep at like 7.30 or something like that. All right, well, I'm not gonna leave the camera running because this is gonna be a purely road trip. So I will see you as I pull into Flagstaff. Okay. The big vehicles. Okay. Keep it at five. It's really dusty in there, and uh, we're on a fire watch, open flames, except for propane. Yeah. Camping. 
Yep. Good. Go number two lane right here in the middle. Okay. Yeah, check you in, tell you where to go. All right. Your camp, campsite's right there. You walk over to the uh, stage, get your packet. All right. We're ready to go. Thank you. Uh, Have a great day. Thank you for the ride. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you over there. Moto 
a gift card up here. Whoa, there's a hotly contested coffee situation happening on the stage. What'd you get? I won an event t-shirt, hat, and condoms. Don't tell me a hat. Can you believe it? David James. Claim your prize during the show hours at the official office. Oh my! Oh my! Get an eBay store going. It's a coffee. So what is it? It's a coffee. It's a phone rack. It's a phone rack, yo. It goes on your roof. Don't you know what a phone rack is? Hello. Hello. gonna make me pay for it. <laughs> 2,000 years later. Filming you, filming me, figuring out cameras. But you have yeah, your that things over your lenses. Too good. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not a complete idiot. <laughs> just mostly. How's it getting uh, any Just mostly. Just that's One just a little bit directional. You don't have to do it. I know. I was this. really impressed. This is Brady from Meerkat <laughs> ADV, and he is a dear friend of ours. And in fact, he inspired us to do the Colorado VDR. Thank you. Thank yes. you did the gnarliest part, too. Yeah. He is like the VDR expert, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Not you comfortable are. with that. No, comfortable with the ones that I've done. Yeah. And uh, you just came from doing the Arizona VDR. And the New Mexico VDR. And the New Mexico VDR. So I had done the New Mexico VDR before, I did that in 2020, but then I followed it up here to Overland Expo. So yeah. that was a lot of fun. And we're gonna do a little piece down back towards uh, Phoenix, which is nice. Yes. And we have somebody who just did it and said, hey, you'll you live. Avoid, <laughs> well, you'll live, but avoid this part. You may not love, you know, about 10 or so miles of it, but yeah. you'll live. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, so thank you so much for all the advice. And what are your plans for the future? So I am currently trying to do all of the BDRs this year. Oh my goodness. So I'm, I'm continuing up the Arizona BDR from here into Utah. I'm not sure how Utah is going to go because it's still snowy, but I'm, <laughs> so there may be some delays or things, but yeah, yeah. that's, that's the idea for now. So the schedule's flexible because I have no <laughs> idea how that's going to go. Wow. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, Brady always has adventures. You should definitely check out his channel. It's Meerkat ADV and it's awesome. We're always looking at your channel for good advice. Appreciate so. that. Thank, thank you. I love watching your stuff and seeing Aww. where you're at. Oh, thank you. So much. So. But most of the time the BDIs are awesome. Yes. And I think you're going to love the new bike with the <gasps> bigger wheels suspension. and better suspension. Yeah. It's going to help you on the off-road stuff a lot. Yeah. So this is going to be our first time off-road on the new bike. Yeah. So we are excited. Bye. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> just called me. All right. Yeah, oh, that's go. funny. Yeah. Yeah. again. On the road again. It's time to get on the road again. So I'm leaving Overland Expo. It is Monday. That was a ton of fun. Got to see a bunch of people I hadn't seen in a while. Meet a few people that I had wanted to meet for a while. Network a little bit. Shoot a little bit of footage. Edit a bunch of footage which was really nice. But yeah, I'm heading out of Flagstaff. I am going to reconnect to the BDR about 25 miles north and follow it all the way to the Grand Canyon. And then the plan today is to try and stay somewhere near Cameron, probably at the Cameron Trading Post because it's right there. We'll see what happens and just have fun. But yeah, I'm gonna kill the cameras and get north to where I reconnect to the route. So I will catch you later. This is 
going to be rocky. <laughs> it's the Arizona BDR. And yeah, we'll just do the thing. Do the thing, thing, thing. I don't really remember a ton about this section. We had a really long day when Gavin and I did this because we ended up going Moon Crater all the way up through the res. So, I mean, we got through the Grand Canyon and everything. We ended up getting to Cameron at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But we had to get through Sunset Crater and all that first. And that took a while with him because he was on basically street tires. And then I am going to bypass the off-road part leaving Grand Canyon because it has that really gnarly descent uh, with all the rock steps and stuff. Apparently that's in even worse shape now than what it was when Gavin and I did it. <laughs> and it was in really bad shape when Gavin and I did it. <laughs> that was the only part of the route that he actually fell on. I was like riding a pogo stick for about 400 yards. And I just wouldn't want to do that by myself. So I'll follow the road out of the Grand Canyon, straight over to Cameron. And the plan right now is to stay in Cameron for two nights so that I can finish editing some videos and get stuff uploaded. I remember this section just being a lot of fun. Um, there was some really fast, flowy two-track. I just don't remember if it was before or after the turnoff for the Grand Canyon. But there was a bit there where both of us were kind of joking and you know, it felt like racing in the Dakar because you're just doing 60, you know, across some really fun two-track having a blast. Had to bypass around Sunset Crater. The table fire went straight through there and all of the roads are marked as closed. I have heard of people that have gone through there and made it, but I'm not gonna risk going up a closed road. It ain't, it's not worth it. This is pretty much like what um, all of Section 4 is like. It's just all this volcanic crap. The trail's not necessarily difficult, you just can't get up to speed because you'll pinch flat. You know, when they start talking about rock gardens in here, they're talking about this stuff, you know? And then you cross into stuff like this, and it's just smooth and beautiful. A little bit sandy in places, but it's a ton of fun. You just gotta be careful because you get moving really fast, and then you cut back into a rock garden. <laughs> and it's sharp rocks. Thankfully most of these are like pretty embedded, so you don't have to worry too much about them rolling over on you. So let's see, got to hang out with Tim and Marissa, No Tears Frontiers. That was a lot of fun. Talked to the Moscow people some more. Ended up running into Ian from Big Rock Moto. He was real nice. Good to chat with him. Basically got him convinced he probably wants another Tenere. <laughs> Can't blame him. <laughs> They're really nice bikes. I mean, I talked to a bunch of people, but those, those were the main ones that have like a social media presence. Oh, that's really ate up. Wow. But yeah, that was, that, the whole event was just a lot of fun. You know, I didn't really, I, I didn't focus on the uh, off-road vehicle stuff because it's just not really my thing. Seeing everybody and just kind of hanging out. We're gonna go first and go right through here. This really washed out, damn. Gotta keep an eye out. 
out for the cut to Grand Canyon. If I'm remembering correctly, it's like the main trail goes right and Grand Canyon goes straight. So I should be able to spot it pretty easily, but I don't know that I'm remembering that correctly. <laughs> I get the feeling I'm gonna end up kind of staying somewhere in Utah for at least several days because there's still a good bit of snow up north. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to get through. My other option would be to get over to like the top half of Nevada and do it. I kind of don't want to do that because it puts me, it's just a bunch of extra miles for not a whole lot of gain, essentially. Damn, this little track is fun. It's flowy, there's little technical areas, and then it just opens back up. You know, little bits of sand here and there, but nothing crazy. You just flow. Love tracks like this. They are so much fun. Came over here. Ooh, that's a big old washout. Oh. Just about locked the front wheel on that one. We're gonna slow down because rock garden. down here <laughs> not much choice I want to get up if I can there we go <laughs> yeah those little technical bits are fun so bad if it wasn't so loose but there's just no oof you're just bouncing off I think 
I said it on my previous Arizona BDR series, like rocks, just rocks. <laughs> That's the Arizona BDR. It's just rocks. Let's go up here. Be still for a little bit. Stand straight. Here's the other trail. Here we go. I got a hiker. This is probably Arizona Trail. How's it going? Arizona Trail? Yep. Nice. Heading to Utah. Yep. Well, you're getting close to the Grand Canyon. Yep. How long you been going? Uh, we left March 30th. Oh, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. You probably passed my buddy back here. I actually didn't. I didn't see anybody else, but um, I'm guessing you maybe turned left onto this not too far back. I've been I've been following this fence line for quite a while. So this is part of the Arizona Backcountry Discovery Route, yeah. which is a off-road like vehicle route that goes from Coronado National Monument all the way up to Utah. It actually ends at the same campground that you end at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. You'll probably get there a little quicker though. A little bit. You're with the Warrior Expeditions crew? Yeah. I just saw your shirt. I went. I did the CDT with them last year. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Hang on, we gotta get a picture together. I just saw the shirt. Yeah, I didn't see your shirt until right then. <laughs> Let me get my helmet off again. Yeah, I was part of the group last year on the CDT. So, what's your name? Drew. I'm Brady. Music man. Uh, trail name. Trail name was Mountain Man. Awesome. So, yeah, send that to Michelle. She'll love that. All right, Brady. Yep. Well, yeah, cool. She's gonna flip out. Uh, she's gonna laugh so hard at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was joking coming down through New Mexico. I'm doing in a day what I would normally take me about a week of walking. Yeah. Been having fun though? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you're what? Two or three weeks from the finish? Uh, should be two. Yeah. That's cool. Here, smile real quick. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> Are there many people on trail or? Pretty quiet. Uh, we're we're kind of the last. Um, Are you kind of at the end of the bubble? Every once in a while, somebody will pass us. Yeah. Uh, find out we're not exactly last. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen. I've I saw several CDT hikers going through New Mexico because I came down through New Mexico. Yeah, we're at the end. Um, yeah, you're. Uh -oh, we're not in a race. I'm 61. No, hell no. It's not a race. Uh, eight years younger than me. Yeah. Any of these things, it is a marathon <laughs> yeah i got i got up to about uh camp hail so about a thousand miles in and my ankle gave out on me so i had to get off trail we both had a couple issues and had to leave for oh okay day. yeah but sometimes you need that time yeah she left for like three days and uh i slowed way down and she caught, she caught right back up nice yeah, now we're your in reach is trying to escape get back in it there it goes. Yeah, you don't want to lose that. <laughs> I will. She might have taken a break or something for lunch. Who knows? Lunch at, this, uh, at the water. Yeah, I don't blame you. All right. Well, stay safe. Have fun. I'll send you a message once I hit once I see that and hit some reception. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. That's so funny. That is the Warrior Expeditions crew for the Arizona Trail this year. He's doing good, he's got two weeks. Two weeks to the finish. That is so funny. Could not have planned that if I tried. So yeah, Warrior Expeditions. That's who I hiked the CDT with, or was sponsored by on the CDT. Wonderful organization. 
consider supporting them if you would like. Even, you know, even though I wasn't able to finish the CDT, like, it doesn't matter. They're a great organization. And that hike helped me so much. They sponsor about 40 veterans a year on various trails around the United States. The Arizona Trail is one of the shortest. I want to say it's like about 700 miles. But it, it's also tough. I mean, the Arizona, you know, you're in the desert the whole time, basically. So, yeah, I mean, the Arizona Trail's not easy just because it's a little bit shorter. Yeah, he started March 30th. It's now the middle of middle to end of May. He'll finish probably early June. Um, it's gonna be hot for his finish, but that's all right, you know? As long as you get there, it doesn't matter how you finish, <laughs> if you finish. All right, going up here, a couple of big old dips. Bonk. Ooh, okay, that's third. That's all right. But yeah, I'll be at the Arizona border probably the day after tomorrow because I'm going to take a day off. And he's going to be another two weeks. Just gives you an idea of how different your world is when you're on trails like this. Yeah, you see hikers like that out here. You need to be stopping. They're probably fine. I mean, you could literally save somebody's life. So ironically, the BDR and the Arizona Trail follow a lot of the same areas. They both start at Coronado National Monument, or very close to it, and they end at the same campground, which is State Line Campground, at the Utah border. And so this is the only time where I know for sure I crossed the Arizona Trail, but I probably did quite a few times before. I just didn't see anybody because I was, I hadn't caught up to the hikers yet. So who knows, I might see some more. I'll almost certainly, good Lord. I'll almost certainly see some at the finish at the State Line Campground, because I did last time. I saw probably five or six people finish. That was really cool. This time I'm a little bit later a week makes all the difference like you would be shocked at how much a difference oh yeah and then i pop out on the big road um, a week makes in whether you see people or not the bubble ain't that big you know there's not that many people going through here The Grand Canyon's kind of crazy too, because you can't see it basically at any point as you're coming up onto it. So it makes a great reveal, but you definitely have that like, oh, we're just going across this flat open country. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, that is the biggest hole in the ground I will ever see in my life. And it just keeps going. Like that's the, that's the really crazy part about the Grand Canyon is there's a lot of areas on it where you basically can't see the North Rim. And so it just goes off into the distance and you lose it over the horizon. It is wild how big it is. Glad I flew the drone when I did because it's too windy and I'm going too fast now to get a good shot with it. Oh God, it is gorgeous out here. The weather's perfect. Hell yes. And we're gonna slow down because more rock gardens. It's going back to the more technical-ish two track. Three rules of BDR travel. Don't get hurt. Don't break anything you can't fix, and have fun. I didn't do so great on that first one for the California BDR, but we're doing pretty damn good now. I know I got kind of quiet. I'm kind of just enjoying the riding. And it's also still super windy, so I'm not sure how much you'll actually be able to hear me. 
So just enjoy the cinematic for a little while. Because this is fun. I saw like three cows hunkered under a bush, and that's all I've seen today. Not that I'm complaining. So last time I came through here, Grand Canyon was actually closed. So we didn't even have the option of coming through here even if we wanted to. Well, we came through here, but we didn't go through the Grand Canyon. It's also why we ended up doing that really long day getting through the Navajo Reservation, because the Navajo Reservation was also basically closed. Cameron Trading Post was closed. I mean, hell, the gas station was only open for pay at the pump. You couldn't even go inside the gas stations most of the time. Not the case anymore. They're still taking lots of precautions, and I can't blame them, but things are open, so that's good at least. Ooh, that's deep sand. Damn really deep sand. I must have had held water or something. Oh, that was deep. Let's go up here. It's just very loose. There tends to be a hard bottom, so you can kind of get away with it most of the time, but every once in a while you just drive into something and you're like, oh, that's talcum powder. I'm not gonna go straight at all. Or like this, where I'm gonna have to follow the rut for a minute. Until I can pop out, there we go. What's funny is I wonder whether or not there's like an entrance station on this road. Cause it is kind of just the middle of nowhere. Like it's not, you know, it's basically a dirt road the whole way into the park. And I'm not sure if I'll know when I'm in the actual park. <laughs> but basically, welcome to the Grand Canyon. Not actually at the Grand Canyon yet, but we're getting there. Oh, that's loose. Oh, come on. That's really loose and heavily crowned. So it doesn't want to track straight. I want to get to the other side if I can. Oh, that's almost worse. That's deep. I think the middle might be my friend. Good lord. Yeah, we're gonna hey diddle diddle right up the middle for a little bit here. I still have no idea if I'm in the national park yet or not. I don't think I am. Because I have to imagine there's gonna be at least a sign. Because, you know, no drones and no camping outside of designated spots and... I don't know, like I've never been in a national park where you weren't on paved roads the entire time. I've never, you know, I've never entered a national park from a dirt road. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Or even if I'm going to enter from a dirt road, like <laughs> I might go to pavement, I have no idea. And I'm not worried about paying like fees and stuff because I have an access pass. So all the national parks are free. So I wouldn't be paying anyone anything anyway. Keep trying to kind of keep an eye out for elk in the trees, but it's hard because I'm also trying not to drive off the road. God, this is so pretty back here. And I'm not even to the Grand Canyon yet. All right, here's the payable at Southeast entrance. Yeah, not worried about that, because access pass. Oh, didn't see that one. Oh, God. Should pop out onto the pavement just around this corner. Wonder if the National Park intentionally leaves it messed up so people don't use it as much. Welcome to the Grand Canyon, the largest hole in the world. You can't see it, but it's on your left. You're right. 
just starting to be able to barely see it through the trees over here. Moran Point. We're going to give that a try. All right, get ready to have your minds blown by Florida tags going slow. Welcome to the big ditch. The really, really big ditch. I don't know if you can see that, but like, yeah. that but this was basically the point at which the Spanish discovered the Grand Canyon obviously the natives had found it a long time before that they were living in it for a couple hundred years <laughs> that would be crazy just roll out oh <laughs> we ain't getting across there and I'll stop at one of the other ones here in a minute and take the uh, other GoPro with me I'll just show you but that was cool. Ran into two students from CSU doing a college road trip. They were really nice. Talked to a guy who had just left Overland Expo also and a Ford Bronco. I'm glad I came through now because I forgot next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. This place is gonna be packed. I gotta try and time it a little bit so that I don't end up going into Moab on Memorial Day weekend either, because that'll be a nightmare. I mean, my plan right now is to basically just kind of pass through, so if I do that, not so big of a deal, but yeah, I don't want to hang out in Moab on Memorial Day weekend. It'll be packed to the absolute gills. There she is. What's crazy is literally, I mean, the forest is right there. So you walk out of the forest, no warning, and it's just endless canyon. This is the eastern side of it. West of here, it goes 130 or something. God, it is beautiful though. See all the stratification layers, the Colorado River. You just see all of it. It's amazing. I love it. Oh. <laughs> they're, you're trying to see the canyon and they're trying to look at the bike. Right. So I took a picture of them looking at your bike and I'm going to put two boys in their toys. <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. Yeah, that's the first thing they did when they got out. <laughs> Hello, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> God, that is amazing. Hey, buddy, <laughs> off. <laughs> I had a pillion for a minute there. A raven decided to come down and hang out on the bike. That was kind of funny. All right, we're gonna go to Cameron. All right, so I'm only about 35 miles from Cameron. So I get there pretty early. I'll fill up on gas, get some food, check in, and edit footage, and do laundry, basically. One of the big things that I need to get done. There you go. This is one where, God, I wish I could fly the drone, but nope. Nope, here's the exit. All right, so I will probably sign off here. If you like this video, please subscribe. Consider giving me a like. Maybe even consider supporting me on Patreon or Ko-fi. And it helps my channel out with making more content like this. 
I really love doing this and I want to keep doing it for as long as I can. Help me help you <laughs> is basically what I'm saying there. And I will see you later. Basically, not quite nine. Most everything's packed up. Did laundry, got stuff charging, got stuff charging, toiletries, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm basically just getting ready for bed. I'm gonna pack all this stuff up and go to sleep. Got New Mexico day three completed and a good chunk of day four edited. Wasn't able to get them uploaded because the Wi-Fi was being an absolute pain and otherwise just kind of hung out. Relaxing day, got my permit for the Navajo Nation for tomorrow, so I will be able to go off-road. I really don't know what's going to happen once I cross into Utah. There's still quite a bit of snow in the northern sections. Basically, once I get past an area called Current Creek, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, I may end up taking basically a week off and just editing footage and kind of taking care of logistical stuff before I'm able to complete Utah and then maybe move up into Idaho. I don't know yet. We'll see. I mean, I'm not in any rush, but I would like to do Idaho and Washington before I need to come back over to South Dakota for the Dakota 600 in mid-July. So that gives me all of June and almost half of July to do those, to do Utah, Idaho, and Washington. But I don't know yet. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Uh, I kind of think Oregon's not gonna happen just because I know they're now coming out with an Oregon BDR early next year and the existing OR BDR that the Off-Highway Vehicle Association created is kind of a mess. So I just don't really trust the GPX tracks that I have for it. I don't know, we'll see. Get into Utah. I've got to try and avoid Moab for Memorial Day weekend, which is next this next weekend. The goal will be to either hang out and wait or blast through and stay somewhere on the other side of Moab because I don't want to be in the area of Memorial Day weekend around Moab. It's just going to be a nightmare. That's the plan so far. Things are going good. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of finally getting into a little bit of a system and it does feel like I'm doing something cool. <laughs> um, I've run into more people in probably the last two weeks that have known about my channel and know what I'm doing than any time previously, so that's kind of neat. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> that's where we're at. I'm gonna go take a shower, go to sleep, and the goal will be for a fairly early start tomorrow, not because I'm in any kind of rush, but because I know it will be hot later in the day and if I can get up near Mexican Hat before it gets too hot, that'll be great. It's about 160 miles or so to the border from here. We'll go from there and we'll see what happens. So I will see you in the morning, later. All right, Cameron Trading Post. Pretty friggin' excellent place to stay. If you're looking for a nice reset day, there are worse places for sure. Okay, 152 miles basically to the border, and then another 188-ish of road to Mexican Hat. Let's do this thing. Can't fly the drone. Drones are not permitted. 
anywhere on the Navajo reservation. So just don't do it. So this is basically the far east end of the Grand Canyon, right here. And it's still pretty impressive. The Little Colorado River. so pretty out here. There's so much more that we could have done for native peoples. They're struggling with, you know, 40% unemployment, high crime rates, high substance abuse rates. Basically, the government's position was shuffle them off in a corner. We did finally at least get a Secretary of the Interior who is a native person. Shouldn't have taken until 2020, but there's a lot we need to do better at. That's the thing, I love, I love my country. I love the United States. It doesn't mean we get it right. It doesn't mean that we're, there's not ways to do better. And that's all that I'm asking for. Do better. Try to do better. You know, coming across here, get your permit. Be respectful of other people's lands because our ancestors weren't. They weren't respectful of other people's land at all. God, what? it's just perfect. There's like no wind. It's in the high 60s, I think. Yeah, 68, I think is what that says. It's just perfect. This is so pretty. I love the Four Corners area. Monument Valley, Valley of the Gods. I'm gonna go up Moki Dugway, so that'll be cool. I haven't done that before. But yeah, it is stunningly beautiful out here. Thankfully, Navajo people and some others are able to kind of take advantage of the tourism for Grand Canyon and all of that stuff, because they deserve it. In a lot of ways, I kind of feel like all of the funding from Grand Canyon, all of the money that Grand Canyon makes should go to the Navajo. I mean, hell, they used to live in the Grand Canyon. There's some horses. Not sure if they'll be wild or not. They certainly could be. We have a very... Hi, hey, buddy. You're a pretty one. So I wasn't able to do this in 2020 because the entire Navajo reservation was shut down. Um, you couldn't even go inside the buildings. And they're still super cautious on COVID. You still have to wear a mask indoors everywhere. You have to use hand sanitizer going into some of the buildings. Like they're still being crazy paranoid about it. And I cannot blame them at all but everything is open again, so there's at least that. Because having taken the tourist money hit of having to shut everything down, God, that had to be so bad. Yeah, Cameron Trading Post was closed last time we came through. The gas stations, you couldn't even go inside. You had to just pay at the pump and move on. Uh, had to go through the Burger King drive through <laughs> to get food, you know, like it was, it was bad. That was in May of 2020 though. So I mean, that was peak holy for a lot of this area. So I'm really glad that things are better now. And I get to do the off-road stuff. Cause this is gorgeous. Big dip, boink. I would love to fly my drone around in here, but don't have the permits for it. So I'm not going to. It's beautiful as it is. This reminds me of Wyoming. I mean, the rocks are prettier colors, but the terrain and the trails are very Wyoming-esque. You know, just kind of fun, flowy two-track.
God, I love this bike. It just, it's as close to perfect as I've ever found. It fixes all of the problems that I had with the 690. The only thing that I would like it to be is 50 pounds lighter. See, I'm one of those weirdos that would live out here. Obviously, I would, you know, I wouldn't buy land because I'm not native. But something like this, I would not be opposed to living out here. So that's slow. I'm assuming somebody's properties out here or something. Or is there like a? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for the heads up. I bet you they've had a couple of good ones on that turn. That's the guys from yesterday. <laughs> he was trying to do a wheelie. Yeah, I ran into those guys at the gas station yesterday. Went and got my permit and was coming back through and saw them pulled over in the gas station. So I pulled over and said hi. They unfortunately lost one of their group yesterday to section five, some of those sudden rock gardens, and he had a pretty bad one and hurt his shoulder pretty bad. That sucks, but it definitely happens. It's cool that they were able to get that big of a group together to do this ride, because it's a ton of fun, and it's definitely better to do it with friends. It's just always hard to get you know, schedules and stuff to line up. That wasn't too bad. Is it a bicycle? I think it's a bicycle. How's it going? What route are you guys following? Uh, Western Wildlands. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is part of the route. Hopefully we'll make it. <laughs> started at the Mexican-Arizona Nice, okay, I saw, I, I hiked a big section of the CDT last year, and so I saw a bunch of the mountain bikers for that, but I hadn't seen many bikers on this route, so. Uh, no, what do you do? So the Arizona BDR, Backcountry Discovery Route, oh, wow. it starts at Coronado National Monument at the Mexican border and goes all the way to the Utah border. It's basically just uh, dirt roads that go all the way through Arizona and kind of highlight the beauty of the state. Yeah. You only have a couple days left then, huh? Uh, today, I should, yeah. Cause it's only, it's a hundred miles to the border. So, well, cool. You guys doing good or need anything or? Are you part of the whole group? No, I, I met them yesterday, but they were doing the same route. So they finished yesterday and now they're heading back. Oh, okay. um, they're heading back to Phoenix, I guess. Oh, wow. okay. So you can cover a lot of ground on one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you got... It's a battery pack for the camera so that it'll keep recording. So I do YouTube and stuff like that. Hang on, I got stickers in here. I can give you one. Oh well, Jenny's the one for stickers. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's perfect. All right, I'm gonna start covering up my Alaskan. <laughs> Where are you guys from? I'm from the UK. Yeah. Alaska. Germany. Nice. I'm from Colorado originally, so this is a little bit more familiar to me. <laughs> it's very different to what I need. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had to explain to somebody one time when I did the CDT, they're like, so, cause, so they were from the UK, or actually they were from Ireland, and they're like, how, how far is that? I'm like, go from the southern tip of the UK to the northern port of Ireland and halfway back. <laughs> they're like, and it's all dirt? Like, 90%. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, uh, and that's the short way across America. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm really glad that people are putting these routes together to allow us to piece together a bunch of dirt roads. And yeah, all right, well, I'll get out of your way and let you go back to quiet. 
Well, thanks for stopping. Absolutely. Yeah, no, after hiking the CDT, I always stop and check on people because you never know. Sometimes you run into somebody it's like, dude, I just ran out of water. Do you have anything? <laughs> have a good one. Enjoy your trip. Good luck. Rocky, there we go. Rocks. Ah. Seventy-two miles. Seeing lots of lizards crossing the road. I would imagine they're sunning themselves until I spook them. This is a little bit more technical than all the other stuff. It's still, I mean, just a ton of fun. There's nothing really difficult to it. You just gotta pay attention a little more. little loose in some places so you can't really avoid the rut. Oh yeah that's sandy. It's all crisscrossing. Big one. All right. Glad I saw that coming. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of the closest this has had to a technical climb. Please. Thank you. Yeah, some little soft bits and some rocks, but what's new? It's just Arizona. Otherwise, the riding's really fun. That's a little looser than normal. Let's go there and over here. There we go. I can definitely see where the other bike group went through. I mean, it's a little deep. Um, because they were all kind of zigzagging back and forth across here. I think they were pretty much all on mid-sized bikes. I think there was maybe two people on 1200s. Most of them were on KTMs. There was one KLR. God, yeah, it's just so beautiful back in here. It really sucks that we had to miss this the first time. So, I mean, yeah, there's, there's like little short technical bits, but none of it's real bad. You just gotta be paying attention. It's really just fun riding, you know? It's warming up, it's up to 75, with just being, you know, in direct sunlight, so it's actually kind of warm. And working a little bit harder, so I'm actually sweating now. Horses. My pretty horses. Didn't mean to make a run, sorry. There's a whole bunch of them, they're just over the hill here. There y'all are. Hi. Yeah, they're, you're like, nope. <laughs> See ya. Oh, there's the pavement.
there's the canyon. Nice, you know, 200 foot drop off. Oh, there's rafters down there. Cool. No jumping. Yeah. I guarantee you they do a... Uh, I want to say they do a uh, day where they do base jumping off of that, but don't quote me. Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. Once I finish up here, it's 188 miles to Mexican Hat, but it's almost all paved and big wide open roads, so that won't be a problem. thousand feet to the finish. Ta-da! That is the Arizona BDR. That is State Line Campground, which is the end of the Arizona Trail. It is time to get into Utah and Mexican Hat.